presence here because I know that you know that this business is all about storytelling. And even so, sometimes we need a reminder of just how powerful stories can be. And I love seeing stories in action. You've heard it here in even a few of those introductions. And I would say one of the most powerful times I saw a story do something it was a couple years ago while I was on vacation. I was in Eastern Europe with my husband um, and I had been asked to speak at an event. We decided to make a week-long vacation of it and so we were strolling the cobblestone streets looking at the various shops. Looking is the operative word. We were not shopping. We were not allowed to shop. I was coerced into this agreement, but there were a couple of important reasons why. Number one, we are a carry-on only family. Anyone else in here? Yeah, like there was, and so we both had our little carry-ons for a winter vacation in Europe. I had already bought a mug in Italy, so I had no more room. So no shopping because of that. But the main reason is because my husband, my beloved husband, Michael does not shop. He is fundamentally opposed to shopping to buying anything new whatsoever. The, the underwear, his underwear will fall off the elastic waistband before he buys. And I'm gonna stop talking about my husband because my father-in-law is in the audience. But now you know, <laughs> no shopping was to be done. We'd agreed upon this. And then out of the corner of my eye in one of the shops on the cobblestone streets, I saw it. It sparkled just for a moment. And as I got closer, it was a pair of bedazzled, sparkly sneakers. I don't know, it just called my name. I couldn't help myself. I betrayed my husband. I pulled him into the shop. I went straight back to the shoe section. He hid behind a, um, like the cologne counter trying to, cause he didn't wanna. When I got back to the shoes, they, they, were, ter they were absolutely terrible and I felt awful. Uh, so I tried to make a beeline out of the store, grab my husband, at a, but at that very moment from behind the cologne counter, appeared, as if from nowhere, a tall Slovenian sales clerk. And he said to my husband, first mistake, are you looking for a scent? <laughs> There's something else you should know about my husband. He does not wear a scent. He is fundamentally opposed to cologne. He feels his natural body odor, uh, is sufficient for, and you know, it kind of depends on the day or the time, uh, but no, he was not going to buy cologne, but before we could say no, the sales clerk continued. He said, perhaps this one, and he pulled from the top shelf um, a box. Uh, it is our top seller is what he said, but before we could say no, this poor guy, this was absolute, absolutely not going to happen. He pulled off the top of the box, revealing a book, and he said, this is eight and Bob. And before we could say no, he said, let me tell you the story of eight and Bob. He then continued long ago, which is a pro storytelling move, okay? Long ago, there was a young American. Oh, he was so handsome, a rising star, charismatic. Everyone was drawn to him and he had traveled across the pond to France. And one afternoon, he was sitting at a table at a French bistro outside and a man walked past him, a French arist... Arist kids do this to you. Aristocat is the cartoon. Aristocrat is the man. Arist aristocrat walked by. And on, <laughs> on the air that followed him was this most incredible scent. Well, the young American, always confident, simply had to know what it was. He jumped the barrier of the bistro. He walked up to the man and said, please tell me what this scent is that you're wearing. Well, the French aristocrat, uh, he was, his name was Fa Fagua. Is that a kind of meat? Well, we're just gonna say Fagua. Could be Fagua. The French, I don't wanna keep saying aristocrat because I'm afraid I'm gonna mess it up. So the French guy said, oh no, no. <laughs> This, this, this scent is one that I make 
myself. I, I make little perfumes just to, just for fun. But the young American was so persuasive, he convinced the Frenchman to give him a few bottles. When the young man went back to the States, if he were irresistible before, he was even more irresistible now when his friends wanted to have some of that cologne that he was wearing. And so the young American would write the French aristocrat and say, please send me more bottles. And at one point he said, please send me eight bottles and one for Bob. At this moment, the sales clerk paused. He looked at my husband. My husband had not blinked. He continued, now you may know Bob. Well, Bob was the American's brother and you might know him better as Bobby. And you might know the American as J F. And Michael said, K. Yes, the sales clerk continued. He said, it was JFK who wore this cologne. Now, there was a time when trade between the United States and France became complicated. So at that time, unable to let go of his amazing scent, the Frenchman would hide it in books. He would carve out the pages in the exact shape of a cologne bottle, place it inside, ship it to the young American, and that is eight and Bob. And at that moment, he opened the box that had turned into a book and there was resting the bottle of cologne. And my husband said three words I'd never heard him say, I will take it. <laughs> now keep in mind, not only does he not shop, not only does he not wear cologne, we didn't even smell the stuff. We had no idea, he hadn't, it wasn't the strategy to spray it on us before we came in. And yet my husband, the most unlikely buyer of them all had to have it. And you won't be surprised to know that the cologne was sold out. We couldn't even get a bottle. That's how good the salesmen were. My husband was not deterred as we walked out onto the streets of Slovenia that evening. He decided that he wanted to become the United States representative uh, to sell eight and Bob. That is how passionate he was about a product he hadn't even used and couldn't even buy. I know that there are a lot of exciting things happening in business right now, right? There's algorithms, there's AI, and storytelling is literally the oldest business strategy there is. However, there is nothing more powerful than the power of a story. And today we're gonna give you a little review of that so that you can continue to harness your own stories and activate your teams and your fields to do the same.